over the building, lift up your hands before heaven now as we worship God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on and just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's got my back. Come on, just worship him for a moment. Just put your hands up and worship him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank God I'm not where I used to be. Wasn't good for me. God's keeping me. God's keeping me. For my destiny, I'm not where I want to be. Where I used to be, used to be, wasn't good for me. God's keeping me for my, come on, I'm not where I want to be? Not where I want to be. Thank God I'm not what I used to be, used to be, wasn't good for me. God's keeping me for, come on, one more time, I'm not, I'm not where I want to be, and I'm not what I used to be, used to be, was good for me. God's keeping me for God's got my back. God's got my back. Woo! I'm not worried. I'm not worried about nothing. He knows. He knows what I need. Predestined them for me. God, God's got my back. I know you do, Lord. I'm not worried about nothing. He knows, he knows, he knows. He knows what I need. Hallelujah. Predestined for me. Father, I thank you now for what you're about to do. And I bless your name that you have our back today and that you know what we need. Speak afresh to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Samuel chapter 16. Nice and soft, brothers. Second Samuel 9, chapter 16. And I want to begin at verse 5. I know this is not a story you're quite familiar with, but stay with me for a moment. Now, when King David came to Bevram, there was a man from the family of the house of Saul whose name was Shimei, the son of Gerah, coming from there. He came out cursing continuously as he came. He threw stones at David and at all the servants of King David and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. Also, Shimei said thus when he cursed, Come out, come out, you bloodthirsty man, you rogue. The Lord has bought you all the blood of the house of Saul in whose place you have reigned. And the Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, your son. So now you are caught in your own evil because you are a bloodthirsty man. 
And Abishai, the son of Zerah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Please let me go over and take off his head. But the king said, What have I to do with you, you son of Zerah? So let him curse, because the Lord has said to him, Curse David. Who then shall say, Why have you done so? David said to Abishai and all his servants, See how my son, who came from my own body, seeks my life. How much more now may this Benjamite let him alone and let him curse. For so the Lord has ordered him. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and that the Lord will repay me with good for his cursing this day. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and he will pay me with good for his cursing this day. Look at someone now and just say, neighbor, I know you want to help, but God's got my back. I know you want to help, but, but, but God's got my back. I've looked at the text several times, and one of the things that catches my attention is the fact that David, who is the, the leader now of Israel, comes now, and he is in a position now where he's broken, but he's not bitter. He's broken because all of his life seems to be crumbling in front of him. He's had issues in his family. His people around him are suffering and struggling. He's got a daughter who is scarred because she's been raped by a stepbrother. He's got a son who's messed up because his father didn't take a position to discipline his own son. He's now got another son that has just been killed and deceased. He's got the blood of Saul upon his hands. Even though he did not kill Saul, he was a part of that which caused his death. He's got the blood of Saul's children upon his hands at the same time. And in the midst of it all, he has his own personal life issues that are there. And now at this juncture in his life, David has been in the city of Jerusalem, has been ready to set up his kingdom and his reign and become the titular head of Israel. And while he's about to take over to do all that God had made promise to him, in the midst of it all, his son Absalom now has decided to come in and take back everything the king has and to steal the very throne from him. His own son now has decided that he's going to take over and in so doing he has corralled the men in a conspiracy against David and David deciding not to destroy Jerusalem takes his household and 600 men and leaves Jerusalem and begins to head over the side of the mountain trying to discern what is God getting ready to do. He does does not want to hurt his own son. He does not want to do anything crazy, but at the same time, he's broken. He's heartbroken. He's broken in his spirit, broken in his mind. He doesn't know what to do. There are times in our lives when life comes at us and bombards us so much that we really don't know what to do. We don't know what the next move is. We don't know what the next plan of God is for our life. We don't know how God is getting ready to fix this thing up. What we do know is what we're experiencing right now is beyond our personal capacity to bear it and so the only thing we could do is to try to find a way to get solace in the midst of the situation and here David is, he is in struggle mode, the struggle bus is real, he's on the struggle bus now if you will because he doesn't know what to do he doesn't know how to restructure the situation and while he is there broken but not bitter, he's not mad with God, he's not mad with anybody he doesn't know what will God do next. God, how are you going to work this out next? I know there's somebody in here right now because of all that you've been going through, you don't want to be mad with God, but it's kind of hard not to wonder where God is in the middle of this mess. You don't want to be upset with heaven, but it's kind of hard to wonder what God is doing to fix your situation. You've heard from the doctor. You've got the diagnosis, and what you've been dealing with is enough to break 
anybody down and you're broken in your spirit because you realize that what's going on ought not to be so but at the same time of your brokenness you have not allowed yourself to become bitter towards God you're standing still and trying to say Lord show me what the next move of God is going to be speak to my heart Holy Spirit and show me how we're going to get out of this mess right here and that's where David is he is broken but he's not bitter but he's also belittled in the situation somebody is belittling him talking against him pulling him down and I'll tell you this much there's nothing like being down and somebody kicking you when you're down there's nothing like somebody talking down to you. There's nothing like going through and somebody putting dirt on you and saying it's even worse than what you know. He's being belittled. Somebody's talking against him. Somebody is speaking out against his life. He's being bruised. What do you mean bruised? Because the enemy is trying to come after him, not just to take him out, but to put him in a situation where he does not trust God anymore, where he believes that now is forever. Do you realize the enemy he wants to put you in a mental bubble to believe that your current condition is your permanent condition, that today is forever, that what is temporal and temporary is going to last forever. What you have to know is the devil wants you to believe that because if he can make you believe that now is forever, he'll make you give up on your tomorrow and release your hope into the abyss. But as long as you believe that God is going to work it out, as long as you know God's going to fix it you hold on to your hope and that's what he's trying to steal from you he wants to get you to a place where he squashed your hope he squashed your joy he squashed your peace he squashed your happiness he squashed all that God has done from you he's taken away your praise and in the midst of that then he knows he has complete control but I don't care what anybody says I want to tell right now the devil is a liar uh, the devil is a liar. I, I, let me help you right here. You've got to know when the enemy comes in like a flood, God still knows how to lift up a standard against the enemy. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God still knows how to barricade the child of God. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God still knows how to take care of you. The old hymn writer said, be not dismayed, whate'er be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings on love abide, God will take care of you. And what you have to know in your heart of hearts and in your mind right now is that God will take care of me. I don't care what I'm going through right now. I don't care what they're saying right now. God will take care of me because God's got my back. There are some things that I've got to realize that I can't fix. There are some situations I can't change and alter. And let me help you here. Even when there are those kind of situations that are going on, I've got to be careful not to let anybody else go and try to fix it for me. Uh, See, the man wanted to go and cut his head off, but he said, no, leave that man alone because this is not the only problem here. All we're seeing is affect, but there's a root cause somewhere that must be dealt with. We're looking at one man blowing up dust, but there's something else going on here. Don't get caught up on the dust blowing, rock blowing thing. There's something else causing that, and I need God to fix the root cause. I don't need you just to cut the head off. I need to get rid of the whole snake. I need to get rid of every part of the root of it. I need to make sure that it all dies. I don't want to just take a little piece off and think I've handled this thing. I need to exercise all this cancer. I need to get all this wickedness out the way. So don't just get no little tiny piece. Let's figure out what's going on here. Let me take a minute here and find out what's happening in this place before I allow you to go ahead and take off this head. There'll be a time to kill my enemies but today is not an enemy killing time. Today is a day to wait on the Lord and say, God, what are you getting ready to do? I know you got my back. You have to be careful fighting folk in situations that can't hurt you anyway. 
uh, he cursed him. He tried to do physical harm to him with stones. He tried to shame him with his words. He tried to do all that, but it amounted to nothing. Some of y'all are losing your mind over stuff that amounts to nothing. Uh, I don't care what it looks like, it still amounts to nothing. Notice now, what he's looking at here is he's cutting the food. He is throwing these dirt in the air. He's throwing rocks at them. He's hurling insults. Uh, he's hurling cursings at him. Now, he's not using your four-letter French words or whatever y'all call them. He's not using his sailor language. He's using words that would speak to curses as though this is how I want your life to be defeated. Uh, I want your family to be a mess. I want your household to go down. I want to take out your children's children. I want you to be accursed in your life. I want the devil to stand at your right side. I want the enemy to take control over everything you have. I want the devil to ruin it. Let me tell you something. Everybody in here, the devil has an assignment on your life. He's already tried to curse you. He's already tried to speak against you. But what you have to know is that what God blesses, it doesn't matter what the devil tries to curse what God has anointed. It doesn't matter how the devil tries to pick it apart, say what you want, do what you want. But when God has laid his hand on a situation and laid his hand on an individual, there's no devil in hell that can remove the hand of God from your life. If God be for you, who can be against you? If God be for you, who cares who's against you? If the Lord's on my side, what can man do to me? <laughs> you have to realize that what, what's really interesting in here is that the enemy who's coming after him is not mad at him because of the things he's hurling accusations against him about. He's not mad at him because he's a bloody man or a warrior. Everybody knew he was a bloody man and a warrior. He's not mad at him because of any sin that he ever committed. Everybody knew he was a sinner. He's not mad at him because of any woman he ever been with. Everybody knew he was a womanizer. He's not mad at him for being on the military campaign and killing thousands at a time. That's not what he's mad about. What he's really mad about is that in spite of everything you've done, God's still elevating you. Y'all missed that right there. The devil's mad right now because in spite of everything you've done in your life, God still got his hand on you. The devil mad right now because in spite of everything you've been through, every low place you've been in, every bad situation that's happened, every time the devil thought he was going to kill you, God still got his hand on your life. He just mad. Uh, let me tell you something. Don't you worry about folk that drink haterade. You go ahead and give a praise for your haters. Some, some of y'all, some of y'all listen to Cat Williams, the comedian. Cat Williams said it like this. If you don't have an enemy and you don't have anybody hating on you, it's because you ain't doing nothing. You ought to get excited and look for 40 more to hate on you because it means God is blessing you. You ought to tell somebody, God is blessing me. God's got my back. Jay-Z said, you got to get that dirt up your shoulder. Let me, let me. Here he is. This man is throwing dirt in the air. This is an Eastern way of expressing contempt for the man in front of him. He's throwing dirt in the air. He's throwing small rocks at him. Let me tell you something. 
What he's throwing in the air will not harm him. What he's throwing on a rock will not hurt him. But it is the same thing that goes on today when you see people in the Middle East now tossing rocks while other folk have cannons and guns. What is it? It is a way of showing an insult against the person who you're throwing it at. So what he's trying to do is to bring condemnation and insult to him. He wants to make him look bad. He wants to talk about him. He wants people to look down on him. But I thought I would tell you, you have to understand, your success does does not insulate you from your insults. Just because you're successful doesn't mean the devil won't try to insult you. Just because God has blessed you doesn't mean somebody won't talk about you. Uh, just because God has his hand on you doesn't mean somebody won't say you got it another way. Just because God elevated you, somebody will say you slept your way to the top. They, they, you Just because God has given you the victory, somebody will try to figure out how you got there ahead of them. And you have to understand, don't you worry about their insults because their insults don't put food on your table. Their insults don't take care of you at night. The insults don't keep heat in your house. The insults don't keep gas in your car. The insults don't allow you to sleep on a silly posturepedic mattress. You just said, go on, haters. Keep on hating. God's got my back. There are some people that get mad when other folk get blessed. But you got to tell them, look here, baby, God's got my back. God's got my back. Here he is. He's talking junk to David. He's trying to mess with him. He's trying to wound him. He's trying to get his goat. Can I help you here? This is symbolically of wishing death upon him. Ah. I see, see, some folk wish death upon me. Lord knows they got blood in their eyes and I can't see. I just, you just, I'm sorry, I, got, I just went, just, listen. They, they want to kill him, they want him down. But you got to understand something. There are always going to be folk that will talk about you. I don't care, you get your hair done today, somebody will say, ooh, that's nice, you must have paid a lot for it. You don't get your hair done, somebody will say, ooh, you need to get your hair did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, I don't care what you do, somebody's going to talk. You lose weight, they say, oh, you must be sick. <laughs> you gain weight, they say you eat too much. <laughs> you stay the same, they say, mm, look like they can't put no weight on them bones. Good job. Somebody's always going to insult. And what you have to understand is, I don't care what success you have in life, it doesn't insulate you from the insults of the enemy. But you can't let the insults dictate your response. Oh, man. Listen, listen. That tells me this, that your status does not insult, insulate you from your integrity. Ah, uh, my status does not insulate me from my integrity. In other words, just because of who I am doesn't mean I get to act a fool. Ah, uh, there's a way in which I've got to carry myself. Now, 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 I said this earlier, if you wanted to know who David was, David was becoming greater and greater as a man of God. As he began to approach his life, he decreased some of the things he used to do as he increased the things that God wanted him to do. And sooner he got the integrity of God in him and his character was in him. And I want to tell you this, you can really judge your character not by how you do when you're broken, but how much you handle after you've been broken. After you. See, some folk do good when, they, when everything's all right. But after you've been broken, what do you do then? After stuff done hit the proverbial fan, what you gonna do? After the feces has hit the rotating circular blade, what you gonna do? Now, see, see, that's when you really know who you are. And when they said, let me go over there and cut off the head of this dead dog, he said, man, look, chill out. Don't, don't bother him. Because, see, I got to live with whatever you do. 
Don't, don't, don't bother them. Now, I got a right to kill him because there's a rule in Israel that says you cannot speak against a ruler in this manner without being put to death. I got a right to kill him, but my integrity says don't touch him now. Listen, listen. I can't let you make me out act outside my character. I, I'm telling you now, you have to recognize that if you wanted somebody to kill someone, David would have been your man. Back in the day, David made a reputation on killing. He was a killing machine. So it wasn't a matter that he was afraid of killing. It wasn't a matter he couldn't stand the sight of blood because he's the one that don't show you how to take a head off when he took the head of Goliath. So when you're talking about chopping heads off, all the man was saying is, I'm going to do for him what you did for Goliath. This is your Goliath today. I'm about to take... Listen, I got to cut you as the rule. It's a Bernie Mac moment. Listen. Some of this stuff goes right over some people's head. Listen, but what you have to realize is that's not who he was at that moment. He'd come to a different place in his life. And what I've got to do is I've got to deal with my life differently. Let me help somebody right now. I know when folk used to tell you off, you'd cuss them out. I know, I know when folk used to do stuff to you, you would get them back. I know you used to want to curse folk. Come on, I know, look, some of y'all right now, pull over, we can get it on right here. Back in the Pentecostal churches, they say, don't make me lay my Holy Ghost down. Yeah. Listen, listen, and, but see, that pugilistic mentality may have worked back then, but since you've been born again, since you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, since God has made a difference in your life, the things you used to do, you don't do no more. The only hands you want to lay is when you're getting ready to pray. You're not looking to punch somebody out now because you've got to function in your new integrity and that keeps you from acting a fool. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't work with you and that God's not going to bless you because the more you live up to your value system, the more God can honor you. Okay, I'm out of time. I got to get ready to get out of here. Let me hurt him close. But I got to leave you on this last one. Number three, this is it. Your situation does not insulate you from your inspiration. Now this I love right here. Your situation does not insulate you. That is, guard you off from your inspiration. Here it is. This is the God's got my back moment. What you have to recognize is that when this man is talking and he's going off, some of what he says is true. Some of what he's saying in his cursings is true. He was a bloody man. So when he's listening to him, what he has to do is, in his heart, he has to give at least a little bit of room for the fact that what is happening to me right now may be happening by divine permission. I'm going to mess somebody up right now. He said, I got I got it before I go crazy, before I lose my mind, I got to at least wait and see. Did God authorize this to happen to me? Did God give permission to this to happen? And what I suggest when he asked the question, is this of God? What it suggests is that if it is of God and it has been given permission, it means it's been given access for a purpose. And if God sent it for a purpose, I don't want you to cut it off until the purpose has been achieved. I wish I had two or three saints understood what I'm talking about. I don't want you to get rid of it just yet until the purpose has been achieved. I, I was watching one of those bot shows, they, they got a new series on now, and this woman had this skin that was dying, and they took leeches out bought a whole box of leeches and put the leeches on it. Scared her to death. Well, you gonna put these leeches on me? Yeah, these are blood sucking leeches. Yeah, I'm putting leeches on you. You on my body, on your body, I'm putting these leeches on you. I'm gonna put them on. And why are you putting leeches on? Because the leech will suck the blood up through the skin and cause the skin to come back to life that was dead. 
Well, there's what? You just put a blood sucking leech on my body, and it's a bad thing any other time. But since this has purpose attached to it, ultimately, it'll bring life back from a dead situation. I'm trying to preach up in here. And there's some things that God will let me go through that not, are not comfortable, they're not convenient, they're not what I want it to be, but sometimes God will let me go through it in order to bring life back to a dead situation. And if this is what you got to do, God, to fix this situation up, I sense I know what I know, and I know you got my back. Go ahead and let the leeches go on and suck, because I'm getting ready to get blessed in this situation. I got to close. I told you I'll leave you. I gotta... Let me give you the last part. Well, then, God, listen, the other part is if you didn't send it. If you didn't send it, then what you have to do now is you've got to turn it around. Y'all about to get this. I'm going to help you. God, I know what the doctor said, but if you didn't send that through this doctor and I'm not supposed to go through that, then I want you to... I know he tried to put my life on a calendar, but if you didn't tell him that, turn it around. I wish I had somebody help me right here. I, I know they try to tell me it's over, but if you didn't say that, God, turn around. I heard the curse words that they put on me and they tried to decree and declare that it was over for me, but if you didn't say that, God, and I'm so glad we serve a turnaround God. I wish I had two or three people in here that understood that God will turn it around and give God a turnaround praise. He'll turn it around. He'll turn it around. Okay. Now, because I know you need this. I'm going to give you the last thing. Because I know you want this. You want this here. So why did David say, if this is not of God, God will see my affliction or see my tears and God will bless me? Because David has record. I'm going to give you the record. David knows what God has done in the past. When Balaam came out to curse the children of Israel, every time he cursed them, God took the curse that went out and turned the curse into a blessing. I just need somebody in here. Let me help you right here. Even when the devil tries to mess you up, even when folk try to talk against you, if God didn't send it, don't you worry about it. God is getting ready to... I just need somebody to say, turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around.